Hello, this is Monica Reinagel, and you're listening to episode number 481 of the Nutrition Diva podcast. Welcome. A listener writes, I have recurrent problems with candida or yeast, and I've seen articles stating that I should eat less sugar and avoid foods that contain yeast, such as bread. But how accurate is this advice? I am so glad you asked. There is a confusing mix of true and false information online about candida, diet, and nutrition. So today I want to spend some time sorting fact from fiction. Candida albicans is a type of yeast that's commonly found both in and on the human body, where it generally causes no problems. Certain conditions, however, can lead to an overgrowth of this benign organism, and the resulting infection is known as candidiasis. And overgrowth can affect the mouth and the throat, in which case it's commonly referred to as thrush. Very rarely it can spread via the blood to internal organs. But by far the most common location for candidiasis is the vagina. So what causes yeast infections? Antibiotic use can set the stage for yeast overgrowth by killing off beneficial bacteria that would normally hold candida populations in check. High estrogen levels can also be a risk factor, which is why yeast infections are more common when you're pregnant or if you're taking hormones. People with a suppressed immune system can also be a lot more susceptible to yeast overgrowth, as are those with diabetes. But apart from these obvious risk factors, some women just seem to suffer from more than their fair share of these uncomfortable infections. And it's natural to wonder whether diet and nutrition could possibly play a role. And as this listener discovered, you will find lots of advice on the internet for anti-yeast or anti-candida diets. The most common advice is to limit sugar and carbohydrates, to avoid yeast-containing foods and beverages, and to increase your intake of probiotic foods. So let's take these one by one. But first, a word from our sponsor. Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. With three mattress models, the original Casper, the Wave, and the Essential, Casper mattresses are perfectly designed to soothe and cradle your natural geometry. Not to mention, the breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night. And it's delivered right to your door in a small, how do they do that sized box with free shipping and returns in the US and Canada. But the best part is that you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100 night risk free sleep on it trial. After all, you spend one third of your life sleeping, you should be comfortable. Get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash diva and using diva at checkout. That's casper.com slash diva. And the offer code is diva to get $50 off your mattress purchase. Some terms and conditions apply. And now let's take a closer look at the main recommendations for an anti-yeast diet. Number one, does a high carb diet cause yeast infections? Well, as I mentioned earlier, people with diabetes are at higher risk for yeast infections, especially if their diabetes is poorly controlled. And that might suggest that high blood sugar levels encourage yeast overgrowth, but this has not been proven. Remember, yeast organisms are generally not in your bloodstream, so it's not as if having extra sugar in your blood would provide more food for the yeast and then cause them to proliferate. If there is a link between sugar consumption and yeast growth, it's more likely due to the way that diet affects the chemical composition of your urine. And one study found that cutting down on the consumption of both sugar and artificial sweeteners reduced the frequency of yeast infections in women who are prone to them. Many so-called candida diets also recommend eliminating starches as well. I was unable to find any research showing that cutting out pasta, breads, crackers, and other things made with white flour affects the frequency or the severity of yeast infections. That said, there are a lot of other benefits to limiting your consumption of both added sugars and refined flour. So here's the bottom line. Even though the evidence linking refined carbs to yeast overgrowth is limited, there doesn't seem to be any downside to following this advice. 
But will avoiding yeast-containing foods help prevent yeast infections? Probably not. Again, this doesn't appear to have been studied in controlled trials, and that could be because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The type of yeast that lives on your skin and sometimes causes infections is Candida albicans. The type of yeast used to bake bread and brew beer is called Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and it only rarely causes infections. If anything, having some of that S. cerevisiae around might help keep your C. albicans population in check. Now, people with an allergy to yeast or mold, and this can be readily confirmed with allergy testing, should absolutely avoid foods made with yeasts. However, yeast infections are not caused by yeast allergy. So the bottom line here, foods and beverages containing yeast are unlikely to be a factor in candidiasis or yeast infections. But could probiotic foods prevent yeast infections? There is some research showing that eating yogurt can reduce the proliferation of candida in both the mouth and the vagina, and this actually seems logical. The beneficial bacteria in yogurt and other fermented foods may help keep the candida population in check. Probiotic supplementation during or after antibiotic use can also help reduce the risk of antibiotic-related yeast infections. Although probiotics or probiotic foods may help prevent yeast infections, they are usually not sufficient to treat one that's already underway. Fortunately, there are antifungal medications, both topical and systemic, that are effective. And at least one study found that combining one of those antifungal therapies with a probiotic supplement can work even better. So the bottom line here is that probiotic foods are a great addition to a healthy diet, and they might help prevent yeast infections. Now, yeast infections are pretty hard to miss. The symptoms are fairly obvious, pretty unambiguous, and usually uncomfortable enough to get your attention. However, there are some practitioners out there who blame yeast intolerance or hypersensitivity for a long list of vague symptoms, ranging from headaches to fatigue to muscle pain to depression. Some of them even claim that the vast majority of the population is suffering from undiagnosed yeast overgrowth. There's very little evidence to support this theory. It is possible that some of those symptoms might improve on a so-called anti-candida diet, but this probably has more to do with reducing your consumption of refined carbohydrates and other processed foods than it does with your candida counts. So in summary, if you suffer from frequent yeast infections, please check with your doctor to rule out any underlying causes such as diabetes or immune dysfunction. But after that, reducing your consumption of added sugars and increasing your intake of yogurt and other probiotic foods might help, and it can't hurt. In fact, it's a good strategy for improving your overall nutrition. This is Monica Reinagel, and you'll find a transcript of today's podcast, including links to the research that I referenced at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com. And you'll find me on Facebook and over at nutritionovereasy.com. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great week, and remember to eat something good for me.